Hey, it's Rich back with you for another video. We're at Orange County Airport today at uh, Jay's Aircraft. It's where Amir keeps his Kodiak. A lot of people have been asking when we're going to do the video on the Kodiak and give you an update on Amir. So here we are. And uh, it's been, what, a year since uh, we flew the caravan, right? Yeah, it's been about a year since we did the stint in the caravan. And I've come a long way uh, with, with you know my flight training and the Kodiak. And I'm excited to share my story. Yeah, it's going to be fun. We're going to tell you about the Kodiak and tell you what Amir's accomplished in the last year. Take you along for the ride. Okay, I thought we'd do a quick walk around of the Kodiak and uh, have Amir tell us kind of what he was thinking, what he was attracted to on some of the some of the qualities of the airplane. I know like in some of the other airplanes on a shorter size plane, you can't get a cargo pod. So this was a really big deal. The front, middle, and the back, they have a pretty high load rating. Um, you can see the flat tracks fully machined. I haven't seen that on any other airplane. Uh, the split wing design is, is really nice. Flying it at slower speeds for a newer pilot like me uh, gave me more confidence. You know, I can attest to the quality, the real leap in quality that, that, that they've they've uh, achieved here. The cargo pod on, the, on this airplane, you can't get a cargo pod on a short airplane if you want to get a new one. And that's because of the T TKS system. That's a huge benefit here. If you want a caravan and you want a cargo pod, you gotta really get a grand caravan. The nice thing about this too is, you know, when you're learning to fly, one of the big things you do is keep checking fuel. And obviously this is, you know, the wings are really high. It's hard to get on the top of the tank. This is really neat. Even on a Cessna, it sucks having to go up there and look in there and do all this stuff. This is a magnetic dipstick. So all you do is kind of pull this thing out and it's got a float on there. So I can see that I got about 150 gallons or so in this tank. So. You you know, this makes it really easy to actually see how much fuel is in the plane and you don't have to crawl up and get your hands dirty. And you can, you know, this is like a little step. Yeah, step yeah, so I'll, I'll just literally kind of step on this like this, throw this thing up, turn it, and back in. It's locked away. That's, and, that is, that's so cool, yeah. I haven't seen that before. Yeah, and then the sumps, um, that's the other thing. If you leave the plane outside um, and you need to sump the fuel, it's super easy. You got a little box right here. You'll open this thing up. I'll show you guys. So you just pull this tube out and these are all your little vents and the sump. So you'll turn this and you can drain all the fuel out of that. Very clean, very easy. That is nice. You don't need to have to, you know, mess around with going under the plane and pushing a bunch of, bunch of, you know, things. Uh, this this makes it super. Little stupid. conveniences like that are nice. Yeah. You almost always get jet fuel all over your hands. Yeah. The other thing that I got on the plane too is the TKS system. It's got the, um, this metal channel with a, with a lot of microscopic holes in it. Um, I've actually used the plane in ice and the TKS system worked really, really, really well. It seeps the TKS fluid all over um, the surfaces of the wing and, and you know, even down here. Very gonna, effective way to, to de-ice the airplane. Yeah, it, it works. ice from getting on. Yeah, it works really well. It, it worked for me and, um, you know, it was worthwhile, I think, to get. So I'm, I'm here in the cockpit. You know, for me, the cockpit's laid out really nice. It's got the uh, G1000 NXI. As a beginner pilot, it's been pretty easy adapting to all this. I, I'm, the seats are comfortable. I mean, it's been a really good platform for me to progress through, and I'm getting pretty comfortable with the airplane now. Once you start getting it and learning it, you know, you get through it and you start to pick it up and it all starts to make sense. Ground taxi ACI North the Alpha.
we just leveled off here at uh, 11 5 in the kodiak on our way to vegas amir's got some business out in vegas we're gonna go out there and uh take care of one of his uh offices and i met amir what maybe was it two years ago Yeah, about two years ago two years ago was hadn't taken your first lesson yet no thinking about flying yeah and uh so take it from there from kind of how you evolved into where you're at now yeah so i mean it's definitely been a been a commitment on my end um, I started flying about two years ago. I got my private pilot license um, about nine or ten months ago. And during that time when I was doing the training, of course, you know, we looked around, around for planes. We talked a lot about, you know, what I wanted to do, what I wanted to accomplish, what would fit in my level of, of uh, being able to fly. And um, I settled down on the Kodiak. And, you know, here we are uh, about a year later from our you know, some of the first time we flew together, and now I got my instrument rating. I have about 350 hours, and um, you know, I'm flying a Kodiak. Yeah. What uh, What's been the most challenging part of getting the the initial private or making a way uh, through the instrument? The instrument was super tough. You know, it, it sounds easy on paper. It's like, oh, well, you take the test, and then you just need to do like 40 hours of instrument flying and some cross countries, but it was actually uh, pretty challenging for me to really learn um, and be able to do it. And uh, that that was that was pretty tough, but even the private was tough. I mean, it, starting off, I didn't think it was gonna be this hard. It was, it was a commitment on my end. That was the toughest part. And I think the other tough part was actually finding good mentors like you and, you know, Matt and a couple other people that I flew with consistently. Yeah. Um, you know, it was hard to find planes and, and flight instructors and stuff like that. So it's tough. I mean, it's tough to have a busy work schedule yeah. and then to dive in, knowing you've got to get the instrument too. Like that was, you knew that was not an option. You were going to have to do that. Yeah, so I had to definitely do that for insurance reasons. Um, you know, those looking to get a new plane, uh, one of the things you're going to get stuck with is uh, insurance and basically without an instrument rating you're not Jet even going to get insured yeah. especially in a turbine uh, airplane so that was a big hurdle for me and um it took it was a commitment getting the instrument it was it was tough i mean how did it all start with even thinking about flying where, where did that begin yeah i mean i've been wanting to fly a long time it, it it's been a long time that i've been wanting to do it it just i i didn't have the time and um you know it's also expensive so it's something i wanted to do for a, for a while uh, I, I kind of met the right people and, you know, they were flying and I was flying with them and I was like, this is pretty neat. I, this is something that I actually want to do on my own. And so that was kind of what set me out to do it. It also helps a lot with, in terms of my business, I have a, an office in Las Vegas. So I'm right, able to fly out there and, and, you know, take my staff out and we'll work out there and come back. And just the accessibility yeah. is really, really open. That's huge. Me. That's huge. Did, uh, so was was Bob early in flying? Yeah. Or? So I I have my brother-in-law Bob. Um, you know he's a pilot. He's you know I flew with him a couple times. Um, you know I talked to him about flying a lot. In the very beginning, he set me up with a plane and, and went up with me a couple of times. But he, you know he's busy. He's a career pilot. Yeah, so yeah. He's he's you know flying 20 25 like days a month. So it was you know hard for him to have a commitment to be able to Teach. help me on a yeah, day in and day out basis. So you know I kind of sat in with with I, I probably had like six or seven World different 50, mentor pilots that I was flying seven. with yeah. just to kind of get a feel for things and, and learn what I'm doing. Is it is. Uh, fun and rewarding and everything you thought it'd be oh yeah this is up. awesome it's a whole different world to me yeah um, it really is yeah i mean i tell you all the time like guys who have flown grown up around flying and aviation it's it's just it's something that they've been doing yeah. for a long time but coming in at like 40 years old and you know all of a sudden flying and being in planes and being able to go where you want when you want um sitting in left seat in a jet you know stuff like that is just yeah it's, it's a whole different world yeah me. it really does open up a whole different 
uh, world of travel and what you get to see. And yeah. lo- even especially in airplanes like this, like low level right. versus up high, it's, it's, to me, it's it's much better. I mean, you don't get there quite as fast. Right, but, right. But yeah, even for me, after flying as long as I've been flying, I still get a big kick out of any flying. Right. Center, center, yeah, that's cool. So it's good to hear that, you know, it's been, it's, it's everything and more than oh, what yeah, you really it's, expected. It's been, it's been awesome. And this airplane, I think really probably even i mean i believe you had high expectations for your airplane but i really feel like this airplane actually exceeded what you really wanted or what you thought it would be um it did exceed what i thought it would be and what i wanted in a lot of ways um it's it was very challenging at first when i was flying it i was very discouraged the first couple weeks um i mean it was a, a big stepping stone to get into this but I have about 150 hours now in, in the Kodiak, and I'm a lot oh, more comfortable with it. Um, it. It's just, it's really grown on me, and it's really nice because I'm able to fit a lot of people. We can put eight to 10 people in here, yeah. um, put everyone's cargo. Well, I mean, we did our camping trip. Yeah. I mean, we put five bikes in here and loaded this thing up to, to I, I honestly thought there's no possible way when Matt pulled up that we were yeah. gonna even come anywhere close. Yeah. We got, I don't think we left, the only thing we left behind was a generator. Generator, and we didn't really need a generator, but I mean, that was, you know, we had everything, everything you can think of in here and more, and you know, we landed, and it's like when we landed at Kern, everybody was looking at us like, are you guys kidding me? Like, how did you fit all this stuff in the plane? <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, that was cool. Okay, so this is a 2022 Kodiak, and you know, I've been around uh, Kodiak's for a long time, right. not nearly to the degree that I have been with Mir, but uh, we we did a demo with the, Car- uh, with the Kodiak Correct. many years ago, and I've watched them evolve, and I've always been more a caravan okay, guy. Uh, November six, five, and uh, Roger, and it's Alpha, been interesting for me to watch Kodiaks like just keep biting into to caravans and to you know to just inch their way into where they were when you and i started talking and it was kind of all about caravans when we started talking and you kept saying no i want to i just want to look at it and i'm like i think i said if you're going to buy a caravan you really should try a kodiak like you'd be you'd be missing if you didn't look at that right right and and then you did and you were kind of like that's it, man. Yeah, so I mean, I did a demo back to back, of course. Um, I did a caravan demo, and about two or three weeks later, I did a demo with uh, Mark Brown, uh, Kodiak's uh, chief demo pilot. And I mean, when I, for myself, when I put the, the two planes side by side, it was just a no brainer for me. Um, you know, the interior in this is really nice. Uh, the executive interior, the summit interior, uh, it's real plush with the caravan it's like you got to buy it and actually then send it somewhere and get in get a nice interior put in the plane to me is a lot more modern it feels more modern it is more modern um i also believe it's uh it's it's better built you know people have their arguments but if you look at the fit and finish of this plane uh, everybody who sees this plane will tell me how good of a fit and finish this is and they're blown away by it and when you get in a caravan i just i don't see that fit and finish the other big thing was the the wing design um you know they kind of mark it as as it's not stallable i don't think that's the right wording for it but it doesn't stall spin yeah and so you know for me as a new pilot it's a lot safer I think the performance of the Kodiak is, is also a little bit better. Yeah. Um, it's a little smaller as well than, than the Grand Caravan. It still gets me a pod. It was more expensive. It's considerably more expensive than a Caravan is. But, you know, in life you get what you pay for. Yeah, what yeah. You and I think, uh, like, your segue into the Kodiak was kind of a opening eye-opener for me because I hadn't, I hadn't really looked at one up close. And... Uh, Fit finish. I mean, I, I, I love caravans and I feel almost awkward, you know, not saying positive things about right. it. It's not a positive, it's not necessarily negative. It's just Kodiak really, I believe, you know, took, a, took the next step in fit and finish and took what's a utilitarian airplane that the caravan is very strong with and they stepped it up on the interiors, with, you know, with the executive interiors. Kodiak kind of 
took it to the next level LA Center, two, zero, in terms of fit and finish, the and quality, like on the doors and the nose yeah. wheel and the, everything. Just and for a guy like you, that just boom, that, that yeah. hits home fast. Well, and it's a little bit smaller. Yeah. Uh, you you had a hard time getting the pod right on a short caravan. Right. You right. can get the pod two, on the, seven, on the yeah. Kodiak. So yeah. it just kind of everything kind of fit in. And yeah, I mean, if you worked. remember when I brought this home and we all got in it. Everybody was pretty surprised at how well built the plane was. Yeah. I mean, even you were like, yeah. gosh, this is like a lot nicer yeah. than I thought. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, the other big thing, and if you remember, you said to me is, gosh, this feels so much roomier. Yeah. Is this bigger than a caravan? Yeah. And it's actually not. It's smaller inside a little yeah. bit than a caravan. But you see out of the plane better. Yeah. And long distance is... Um, you're more comfortable. It's yep. also a lot quieter inside. Yep. Um, I did a decibel test on my phone between the caravan and the Kodiak in different parts of the cabin, and this was considerably quieter. Yep. I mean, you could sit back there without headsets and have a full-blown conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think everybody was, you know, I think the exposure to Kodiak, I mean, Matt was the same. Everybody, the exposure wasn't really that much. That's for five, five, and zero, zero, once one. we started flying this plane, all of us are like, wow, this is like, really 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 nice it really is uh it, it's it hits a spot in the market to me that's the fit finish the the kind of the smaller yeah. if you will size right but yet like you said i mean when, when i rode the back early on like the first flight i took was in the back uh and we had what every seat filled every seat filled and it's like i don't know there's just a feeling yeah, of more roomy it's more roomy feel, and feel to it yeah it's more and, open and they really i think uh, knocked it out of the park yeah. with with this evolution of the airplane yeah. you know what, they really did what they market is that this is more designed for carrying people yeah and i think that that really is true yeah but when you sit in this it is a def one, different three, feel than sitting in a caravan five, the other nice five, thing yeah. too that you know with the kodiak one of the other things that led me towards this is the maintenance is included for four years yeah so you know they take care of basically everything whereas when you buy the caravan you know the maintenance is not included so yeah. you're paying for all the maintenance now again the caravan is a cheaper price the entry level price costs a, quite a bit less than a kodiak so you're paying for all that but at least stepping in i know what i'm getting i i know yeah. Yeah. you know what to expect and there's not going to be any surprises for me over the next couple of years yeah, yeah. that makes a lot of sense and, uh, by the way our guys are at caravan or at yeah. kodiak school yeah. this week yeah i heard so, yeah i heard yeah i i i'm a big fan of of the kodiak i really am i mean i still think caravans are great airplanes sure, for certain certain scenarios right. but for what you're doing yeah. when i got in this airplane i rode the back i saw the fit and finish yeah. i knew what you wanted there's no question no. this is the right airplane not at all no and question it's just the utilitarianism of it you know like how long did it take to take the all the seats out like the seats and these are the executive seats they pop out in a matter of like 30 seconds a seat and, and you you do it yeah you don't have to have a no yeah you a literally minute. just Take the seats out. And they're they're better than the, the commuter seats. Yeah, yeah, really yeah, way better. It's a, it's a perfect yeah. fit for what you want. Yeah, yeah. So I, I've been loving the plane. It's been a great experience. And you've me. got NXI. You've right. got TKS. You've got a cargo pod. You've got... I got the weather radar. Weather radar. You've got all the... All the amenities, yeah. options, right. everything. You don't, you don't miss anything no. with this airplane. No. They got it. It's got it all. Yeah. And uh, that's that's... You know that's on purpose and that's why the airplanes are doing so well in the market yeah. and you can see why okay so on on this particular right. airplane your airplane right. 2022 uh kodiak 100 what's the version don't they have like series so this is a series three series three. um it's their latest model i took delivery about six months ago and basically i mean i got every option on this um executive interior the TKS flying to the, you know, into icing system. Um, I got the weather pod or the weather radar so we can get live uh, weather in front of us. Uh, cargo pod, uh, oxygen system. I mean, it, it's it's basically got everything. And I mean, this plane has been great. There's really nothing more that I could ask for for this out of this airplane. Obviously, you know, everybody wants to go faster. Yeah. We all want to go. We all want to be in Vegas, you know, 20 minutes quicker. But you know, for what this is, I mean, I love this plane. It's it's it is so perfect for me. It is so it's been so safe. It's been so great to have. Um, I, I just can't ask for anything more. And at your level, like you got a couple hundred hours, right? Flying, yeah. Uh, 
I mean, I think you you didn't really think you would get it take you a while to get comfortable in it, but I already see you're you're pretty that's comfortable that's in the airplane. Yeah. I mean, you got some you got still some time yeah, to do, but you're you're way more comfortable than I think you thought you'd be at this point. True. Um, you know, obviously, I'm still a new pilot. There's and I know that you know there's a lot for me to go. Um, but the way that I've been able to learn this plane and actually fly it on my own, um, it was tough. It was it was tough the first month. I was pretty discouraged. But um, you know, as I kept flying, I was getting in and getting in. And now, I mean, I'm I feel very very comfortable in it. And you know, that's a lot to say about an airplane. Yeah. I think that this is a easier to fly airplane if a guy like me can get in it. And you know, with some time and some hours, be able to uh, to fly it. Yeah, I think so too. And I think, you know, you think about it, it's a, it's a non-pressurized fixed gear. Right. You know, it's got a turbine engine. Yeah. But in a lot of ways, this turbine engine's easier to maintain than a, than a piston engine on a you know a big six-cylinder piston engine. Right. And, right. Uh, so, I don't. You know, everybody gets a lot of people get wound up like, oh, it's a turbine engine. How are you going to do that? But truth is, it's very easy to manage. Uh, you just have to learn it. And yeah. most people don't get exposure to turbine engines right. with, you know, like you did. Yeah. And uh, one of the other things is I've gone to the Kodiak School, yeah. which uh, was very helpful. That was for five days. Um, I did the simulator. Uh, they go through everything with you. They got the engines cut apart. They go through. I mean, it was a very, very fun course. I learned a lot about the plane. Then they take you out in their own demo plane. Um, and we did some grass strip landings, dirt landings. Um, and that was really neat. Uh, so, you know, and then the simulator and emergencies and all that stuff. So once you go through that, I mean, I did that. I didn't even have my private pilot license. Right. I remember you know, that. Yeah, they, they were kind of like, well, we don't really have people without their private pilot's license doing it. So I did part of the course, and then I actually finished the course when I got my, my private pilot's license. Yeah. So all of that has helped a lot. I'm set to go back to the course again uh, in the next two or three months. And I think that that's going to be very helpful for me as well. Yeah. It'll be it'll be a whole different experience yeah. now yeah. that you've got time, yeah. experience yeah. as a pilot. Yeah. So we're doing 169. True. Right. We're at 11.5. And we're burning uh, about 330 pounds an hour. 330 an hour. So 45 gallons an hour. 45 gallons an hour. All right. So let's look at what the book gives us. Cruise performance. We're at so we're at 11.5. ISA plus 15. Okay, so we're at what what RPM? Uh, we're at 2,000 basically. 2,000 yeah. RPM, and our torque is uh, 1360. 1360. What's the temp? Our temp is 720. Which is 770. What can you see? Outside air temp. Oh, seven. Plus 15. Or? So let's call it 10. Seven. Okay. It's saying uh, 167. 167. It's right on the right on the mile. So 1320 is the torque. Right. And uh, fuel flows is a little higher than book, not much, but the true airspeed's right on the money. Yeah. So, in the caravan, I don't have the book numbers in front of me, but in the caravan, you'd be, you'd be probably similar fuel burn. In the short caravan, you'd probably be uh, about seven knots slower. Yeah. And in the, in the grand with the part, and that would be without a cargo pod. Right. The Grand with the cargo pod, the EX, you'd probably be about the same. Yeah. Those two airplanes match pretty close yeah. uh, with the bigger engine with the cargo pod. Yeah. So you're getting same fuel burn, and you're getting, I'd say, five to seven knots Yeah, a little faster. bit more performance. So a little the performance, bit performance of this is a little bit better. And your short field performance is better. Right. The, the climb performance is better. Climb performance is better. Um, so, you know, it, it's it's performing per the book, and it does probably what, what, uh, what Kodiak advertises in yeah. terms of comparisons with the caravan it, it's been very close to the book the times we've checked different things it's it's been pretty close to the book yeah uh, and i've got tons of time in caravan so right. i don't have the book here but i can tell you I, based on my experience right. kind of what we'd be getting and this so airplane's the definitely faster. Center, one, yeah. and, and again uh, to me you know the interesting thing about this airplane is and it sounds you know maybe not really a, a major deal but Remember, a short airplane now, a short caravan, a 208, it's very difficult to get it with a cargo pod because right. of the way the TKS systems right. work. Right. You can't just take the cargo pod on and off like right. you used to be able yeah. to do. So if you want a cargo pod, which you really wanted, you really couldn't get a short airplane. You had to go to the Grand, Grand. Caravan, right. Right. and that puts you in a different 
size category. Right. It's a much bigger airplane. Sure. Uh, you know, it's an 8,800 pound gross weight airplane. This is right. what, 70? 70, 7,200, yeah. I think. So, you know, it's just, it's a different world. Right. And, and I think Cessna kind of missed it a little bit with not offering that uh, cargo short pad on the short bar. airplane. Yeah, I think they're more directed towards, like we said, maybe, you know, cargo, yeah. cargo industries and not as much. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. it's a working airplane and they try to fit it a little bit. And they sold a lot of airplanes to individuals, but this airplane's really bitten into that, I can guarantee you that. Yeah, you know, one thing too, and I, and I, I say, say this to everybody, and I've told you this as well, and you know, again, I don't, it's not like I've been flying for 20 years and I have all this experience, but this is a very smooth airplane. Yeah. And I think a lot of that has to do with its aerodynamics and its design style. Yeah. This is, uh, you know, was designed in 2007 yeah. and certified then. It's way different than a plane that was designed in like the 80s, early 80s. And I, I kind of compare it to like a, you know, if you get in a 1985 Ford F-150 and you get in a 2000 and, you know, 20 F-150, it's a night and day difference. Yeah. And I think a lot of that has to do with the geometry and the design. And I just, I, I, and this is my personal belief, is that there's something about the design of this plane that is smoother because there's been a lot of times where seasoned pilots, you, Matt, I mean, a lot of people have been sitting with me and they're like, oh, it's gonna be really bad. It's gonna, we're gonna get killed. And you know, we go flying, even when we were camping, it was windy, yeah. right? Yeah. And we took off and we were trying to strap everything down and you know, it was, it was pretty gusty and it, and it really, was very yeah. smooth. No, I, I don't, I mean, some airplanes, they, they cut turbulence better than others. And I, I don't disagree with you. I think it's, it's uh, you know, it is a more modern design. And, and, and the other thing is, you know, Kodiak had the benchmark of the caravan to, right. to say, hey, yeah. what do we want to improve? Right. And how do we want right. to do it better? And they would have been, you know, really missing the boat if they didn't really look at the caravan and figure out how to improve it right and based on the evolution of this airplane i'd say they they've done it so a little bit on the kodiak i think they originally came out with the design or maybe the announcement in like 1999 certified it i believe in 2007 right and uh you know we were right in the thick of caravan sales in 2007 and and from my perspective, uh, to bring an airplane out like this out and, and basically, you know, go toe to toe with Cessna Aircraft Company and then an airplane like the Caravan that's got a very strong foothold right. in the market since 1985 and just, you know, setting them up and knocking them down. And Kodiak comes in very difficult to do right and and i think their original business plan was this missionary thing where like one out of every 10 airplanes was going to go right and i think anybody you ask in aviation that would say hey they're going to stumble they're going to have problems and they did they had some issues and they just kept going the company changed hands and now here we are uh and i flew i can't remember what year it was but i went back to cessna as a dealer one time and, and they had a kodiak that cessna brought in for all the dealers to fly right. and I flew it and it was you know I liked it but it had some glaring sure uh, in, inadequate inadequacies there was some turbine fuel smell in the cabin right. it didn't have the GFC 700 autopilot yet uh, the TKS system was in here right. and uh, to their credit though they fixed all that and they, they evolved it and they went to this you know like okay, a series two one series zero three zero and this airplane and, uh, now is like i mean i'm looking at it to me it's i can't really i can't find any real glaring weaknesses like i was easily able to back in 2007 right right and so i mean from my perspective i really admire and have a lot of respect for a company that stays with it and then from my perspective, like I've, I've, you know, been around caravans and all these airplanes for all these time. And I've seen now Kodiak kind of Yankee, almost Yankee eclipse. Of and then base. here you are. Heading one nine zero and, you know, you're, you, you got some influence from me and you, you choose this airplane. I get exposed to this airplane. It's like a completely different world. Yeah. And that, you know, that, that shows me a company that's 
always here, golf, do have trying to deliver what the market wants. And when you do that, it pays dividends because then you, you, you attract people like you. And yeah, I mean, they've done well. It's, it's, it's kind of what I, one of the things I told you from the beginning was, you know, maybe I didn't know airplanes, but I knew quality. And you knew what you wanted. And, and I knew that I wanted something that was quality built. And, you know, when I got in the caravan, I, I hate saying these things, but it was like one of the things I said to you, I was like, man, the air vents are out of like a 1970s, like, like yeah. pickup truck, you know? And it's like, they haven't changed that. Yeah. And it's like, you get in this and everything's all machined and aluminum 5, and, 8, you know, touchscreen displays. Modern, and heading, yeah. it's just, you've uh, seen, the, you know, it's just been an evolvement. And yeah, for me, that's what I liked. And, you know, that's what, what steered me towards, towards buying this. And I'm very happy with my purchase. Makes a lot of sense. And you got a Bravo clearance into Las Vegas in a Kodiak, yeah, and you're time. getting it all the time, yeah. and I never get them. So yeah, so Kodiak's I, doing something for well, you Well, you know what, I gotta just thank all the controllers that have helped me over the last year or so. Um, a lot of people seem to know this airplane, yeah. and I gotta shout out to all the controllers who are uh, helping me fly, because I am a new pilot, and I, you know, a lot of times I'm not making or saying the right stuff, and I appreciate all you guys for being so patient with me and helping me uh, do this. And we have, uh, you know, we have really, really good controllers in uh, Southern California. And oh, absolutely. Vegas, absolutely. And absolutely. Always a treat to work okay. with. Them. All right, we're uh, making our initial uh, approach in here to Henderson. We're about 10 minutes out, so uh, we're going to continue in, make the landing into Henderson, and uh, have some dinner. Uh, tower, uh, wind check. The southbound wind showing zero two zero at one zero. Roger. Got a long runway. I know. I feel like I'm pretty high. Looking good. We made it to Vegas in the Kodiak with the mirror. Pretty impressive, pretty impressive airplane. It's really impressive for me to see how far Amir has come since I, I remember talking to you on the phone the yeah, first time. Yeah, I do too. And I, and I was thinking, yeah. this guy doesn't know what he's in for, but right. it's always great for me to see people that are like, I'm gonna do this, and then you just watch it just go happen, and here he is, the instrument rating, he's got the airplane, he kind of dreamed of, probably on that phone call, yeah. and you're flying and loving life. And I, I cool. mean, I couldn't have done it without you. Yeah. You know, and guys like you, I've had really good mentor pilots uh, with me and around me and they've really helped me a lot so you know it's one of those things you can't do this by yourself yeah that's but true. it's just been such an amazing experience I mean just landing here on my own plane yeah, and yeah so and cool. it's just so cool it's something and, you can't explain you know coming out of Southern California Orange County flying to Vegas dodging a few clouds coming yeah. into class Bravo into Henderson and coming over those little mountains out there and I mean that's not like it's not that simple right I mean, you got to kind of know what you're doing and you did it like no big deal like yeah. you've been doing it for 20 years so anyway i hope you enjoyed the video it's a really cool airplane i'm big on kodiaks now and always a pleasure to fly with amir and uh, leave us a comment and if you got any questions for amir let us know thanks for watching <laughs>